Welcome to Today Matters, our short devotional in the Word of God. We are going through the book of Colossians in about five minutes a day. What an Easter we had yesterday, man. More salvations, more baptisms, more lives changed. He is risen. He is risen indeed. Now that Easter is over, what up? What do we do now? Well, we want to live for him and we want to grow in him. We want to make a commitment or for some people, renew your commitment to him. So let's talk about how to do that because being a Christian is not a one-time event. It's a one-time decision followed by a daily decision to live for Jesus Christ. Now, last week we started this series in the book of Colossians. And this is a great study on a young church with young Christians who are really falling for false teachings. They started adding things to the gospel message. So instead of freedom in Christ, they were feeling burdened. And they allowed false teachers to really tell them that Jesus Christ is not enough. So Paul wrote to the Colossians to encourage them to grow in the truth. And that should also be the goal of every Christian, to grow in the truth. Otherwise, what happened to this church in Colossae and other churches that we read about in the New Testament, like Ephesus and Galatia and Corinth, it could happen to us. A drifting away from the truth. Now, these churches fell for many false religions, and they even adopted something called syncretism, where you add things to the mix of kind of theology and belief, and you come up with your own theological concoction, thereby coming up with really a god of your own concoction. We really don't want to become part-time Christians expecting a full-time god. And that's one of the main reasons why we need to go from milk to meat, as the Bible talks about. We want to grow in our understanding of scriptures. Listen to this fantastic verse in Hebrews 5, 12. It says, you have been believers so long, so long now, that you ought to be teaching others. Instead, you need someone to teach you again the basic things about God's word. You are like babies who need milk and cannot eat solid food. This is what was happening in the Colossian church as well. See, they had stopped growing in their faith. And that is why they were easily infiltrated by false teachings. See, when you know the truth, you recognize the truth, and then you live the truth. Then when lies come, you can quickly discern the issues. It's just like what we do with counterfeit money. People who recognize counterfeit money, they don't study counterfeit money. No, they study the actual money, the Benjamin Franklins, right, the $100 bills, the Andrew Jacksons, etc., to get so familiar with the real thing, with the truth, Okay, that when they come across a counterfeit, they can quickly recognize the fake. As Christians, God calls us to grow from the elementary things about Christianity to growing into a deeper knowledge of who God is and what He wants for us. Colossians 1.10 says it this way, and we pray this in order that you may live a life worthy of the Lord and may please Him in every way, bearing fruit in every good work. And listen to this growing in the knowledge of God. What is the evidence of your spiritual growth? Let's talk about that for a moment. Paul told the Colossians that they should be growing in the knowledge of God. That, that in and of itself is one way that we grow spiritually. The knowledge of God revealed in his word is crucial to spiritual growth. Peter wrote this. Peter said, like newborn babies crave the pure milk of the word, listen to this, that by it you may grow up in your salvation. And so the first mark of spiritual growth is very simply, there is a deeper love of God's word. Psalm 119.97 says it like this, Oh, how I love your word. It is my meditation all day long. He says, I think about your word. I think about what you have said to me in your word. I process it. I live for it. And I'll close with this. For they are the very words of life.